Hello Year 4 and welcome to another online writing lesson and today's lesson we are going to be editing and improving your work. So the success criteria is I can reread my hot task to check it makes sense. I can proofread my hot task and check for any spelling, punctuation and grammar mistakes. I can edit my work fixing any mistakes using a green pen. So, first of all, what is editing and what is proofreading? What does it mean and why should I do it? I want you now to pause the video and to think about how you can answer these questions. Pause the video now. Good, now that you've had some to think about these two questions, let's have a look. So, to edit your work means to fix any mistakes. Okay, when you're editing work, you're fixing any mistakes. And improving means that you are making it better. Now, why should we do it? I want you now to spend some time just talking to your pen or pencil and explain why it's important we edit and improve your work. Great, I can hear some good ideas. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So let's have a look at what you've come up with compared to my list. So, number one, it's a skill proofreading it's a skill that's really important and it's a skill that you're going to need for the rest of your life uh, not just in school but once you've completed school you're always constantly going to be writing reports writing all sorts of doc different documents and you're going to have to proofread so editing and improving is a life skill it's one of your writing targets that we as teachers assess you on we also need to assess how well you're good at it okay and if we can see that you're struggling a little bit, then it's our job as your teachers to uh, improve that or to help you improve the skill. And like I've just said, it's something that you're going to need to do throughout your education and most likely even your profession. Your profession means the job that you do in the future. So if you've edited and improved your work, but your writing still has spelling mistakes and incorrect grammar, such as missing full stops, capital letters, commas or apostrophe, then you're not proofreading your work properly. And today we're going to be practicing this skill. So to begin with, I am going to edit a short paragraph here with errors, and you're going to watch me as I proofread it, how I as I edit it and I improve it and I make it better. So I've got my pen here ready. So in this paragraph, it's what did the Romans believe in? So I'm just just looking at the paragraph where it talks about what the Romans believed in. And straight away I can see what did the Romans believe in. That is my, uh, um, uh, that's my subheading. And because it's a question and it begins with what, it's one of our question words. I know that I need to have the missing punctuation at the end is a question is a question mark. So I need to make sure that I add my question mark in here. And this is a very very common mistake from looking at your work where we are missing out simple simple grammatical mistakes here and punctuation, punctuation mistakes, something as simple as a question mark. Now I'm going to move on to the actual paragraph. So I've got here, the Romans were a very religious people. That's fine. That's my topic sentence. It's okay. They believed in many different gods. So I know that in my success criteria, I'm writing in the past tense. And the spelling of believed, and because it's a past tense verb, it has to be ed. So the spelling is going to be b e l i e v e d. So it's the ed here. Another common misconception, another common error that children make. They believed in many different gods. Ah, apostrophe s. So I know that I use a, the apostrophe for contractions. So for example, words like don't which is do not or can't, cannot. And also I use apostrophes for possession. So Mr. Ibrahim's pen. So Mr. Ibrahim's apostrophe S pen, the pen belonging to Mr. Ibrahim. But here, different gods, the reason why we're using S here, because it's plural, we're not talking about a singular God, we're talking about many gods, because the Romans believed in many different gods. And the word many here, suggests it's plural not singular so therefore there is no apostrophe it's just g-o-d-s gods no apostrophe i have my full stop that's fine i'm now moving on to the next sentence there were gods for almost everything and gods here is spelt correctly i can give that a little tick for almost everything comma like thunder 
love, war, wisdom, and even the sewer in Rome. Okay, there were gods for almost everything, like thunder. So I think there were gods for almost everything. There's a comma here that doesn't need to go here. Okay, so that can also be crossed off. There were gods for almost everything, like thunder, and then you are listing it love, war, wisdom, and even the sewer in Rome. Full stop. And Rome is correct here because Rome is a capital city, it is a proper noun, so that is correct. So I don't need to change that. Next sentence. The Romans, I've got my full stop, capital letter, the Romans are always trying to keep on the good side of their gods. Oh, so once again, I remember I said earlier, looking at that verb believed, we're writing in the past tense. So the Romans are always trying to keep on the good side? No, the Romans were always, that's the past tense. R is the present tense. So I'm going to cross that out and I'm just going to write were. The Romans were always trying to keep on the good side of their gods. Oh, okay. Now we have three there's. We have this there, the one that's written there. There's there with an E-I-R and there's there with apostrophe R-E. Okay, so there with uh, an ap apostrophe R-E, that is a contraction and it is they are. Okay, so if I now substitute this back into my sentence, let me see if it would make sense. The Romans were always trying to keep on the good side of they are gods. Mm, no, nope, that's not going to make sense, so I can put a cross through that. Now, the difference between their E-R-E -E and their E-I-R, E-I-R is when we talk about possession. Okay? When we talk about possession, when something belongs to someone. Okay? So, uh, their, their mobile phone that I've got in front of me here. Their pen. Yeah? Uh, however, there, with an E-R-E, is when you're talking about position or place. So, over there. Mr. Ibrahim went over there. So, now, let's have a look at my sentence again and trying to think, am I talking about place or possession? Then it will, then I'll be able to w work out which uh, there I'm going to use. The Romans were always trying to keep on the good side of their gods. Okay? So, here, it's their gods, E-I-R. Because we're not talking about the gods being over there, we're talking about the gods that they believed in. Of course, the Romans, they didn't, they didn't own their gods, but it's the gods that they believed in. So we use the T-H-E-I-R, okay? That there. Full stop. Later, the Romans became Christians, okay? So later, later, I know that's one of my fronted adverbials of time, okay? And I know that always after fronted adverbials, what do I need? I need a... I need a comma. So there needs to be a comma here, which is very important. And Romans and Christians, well, Romans and Christians, they're both proper nouns. So they need to have a capital R and a capital C. Yeah. Romans is the name of the people. Christians is the name of the people that follow the Christian faith or Christianity. So proper nouns that need capital letters. So you can see here that I've picked out some of the key uh, or the most common mistakes that we as teachers pick out when we mark your work. Things like question marks at the end of your uh, um, questions for your subheadings. Past tense verbs, ed, were. Uh, proper, noun, proper nouns that need to be capitalised. Romans are Christians, capital C. Okay. The use of the apostrophe. Okay. And there, there and there. So these are just some of the common mistakes that we as teachers pick up when we do your work. And now it's over to you. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is to pause the video and I want you to get your green pen and your hot tasks. So pause the video now and get those two things for me. Fantastic. Can you now please put your green pen in your right hand and your hot task in your left hand? Off you go. Good, just to make sure that you've got them brilliant good so now what you're going to do is that you're going to read your hot task and you're going to check your sentences make sense like i've just shown you sentence at a time for each paragraph so you'll begin with paragraph one starting off with the subheading making sure that you've got your capital letter for the question word your uh, question mark at the end of the sentence and then you'll look at your topic sentence and then all the following sentences you're going to be checking for any spelling mistakes. 
If you are unsure of the spelling of a word, you can get out a dictionary, or if you are online, you can simply Google the word and it will tell you the correct spelling. You can need to check your punctuation. So capital letters for proper nouns like Anglo-Saxon, your full stops, commas after clauses, okay, whether that is uh, uh, your fronted adverbial or other clauses, apostrophes to show contraction, so wouldn't or possession, the village's home. And of course, I've just mentioned this, the question mark after your title and your subheading. So I want you to go through it slowly. Don't rush. Take your time. Remember, this is a very, very important skill. Yeah. And it would be a shame that after all the work that you've done and all the hard work that you've put in into creating these hot tasks, that when it comes to publishing it, you're not able to uh, pick up these mistakes. Once you have done that, I would like you then to take a photo of your work and then I, your edited work, and then you are going to upload it onto Cecil so that we, as your teachers, can see. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye!